So Missy will be coming up in just a moment. She's uh, She will be giving a portion of her third sermon. She, she's been given a three-part sermon. And um, the first part was about getting obstacles out of the way. The second part was about learning to listen. And this third piece that we're going to be hearing today is about discerning God's voice. So they've been facing some challenges at their church, and she says that they've hit a huge crossroads and, uh, and are actually considering leaving their denomination. A huge decision. I would imagine some very stressful and, and trying conversations in, in some meeting rooms. Sounds like the meetings are done now, and they're entertaining the decision about their process and their next steps. Please welcome Missy Carlson. In the first week, we talked about to hear God. You've got to clear out those obstacles that get in your way. You know, like that pesky old emotional baggage that can just kind of follow us around wherever we go? Or those fears or distractions that we have. Because if we don't clear out those obstacles, they will act as a filter to God's voice. And it will filter out so we don't clearly hear his message. Or it may block out his message all together. And then last week we talked about following Elijah's example in the cave, that we've got to stop. We've got to look, just like Elijah looked, as the fire and the wind and the earthquake passed by. And then he listened to that gentle, gentle whisper to hear God. You know, God speaks to us today, and we need to learn to listen what that voice sounds like. And if y'all are like me, you may have a whole bunch of different voices going on in your head. <laughs> like sometime I, sometimes I hear my mom's voice, and she says, Melissa, you need to do this. Or scarier yet, sometimes I hear my voice saying something that my mom said that I thought I would never, ever say. <laughs> like, because I said so. <laughs> or I'll hear my brother's voice, or my husband's voice, or my friend's voice. But we need to learn which voice is God's. So let's get back to Elijah. He'd come out of his cave to hear the gentle whisper of God. And Elijah tells God that he's done all this amazing stuff for him, and now he's the only one left because everybody else has been killed. But God knew what Elijah did not. And God knew that there were 7,000 others that were still faithful to him left. So God gives Elijah his marching orders. And Elijah takes off and does what God demands. But he had to get out of that cave to hear, and he had to listen. That story is found in 1 Kings 19, 15 to 19. I think God speaks very directly to us today, just like God spoke to Elijah, or like God speaks spoke to Moses from that burning bush. God can be just as direct. A few years ago, my husband had one of those burning bush experiences. He'd been getting this nudge from God to start a prayer group at his school. And God had really been trying to speak to Jim through his wife. But <laughs> <laughs> you know how that goes sometimes. That husbands need a little something more than something from their wife. But he needed something more direct. <laughs> Jim was apprehensive because he was, it was in his first year of teaching at this school. And he was the new kid on the block, and after all, it is a public school, and putting prayer in public school just does not go. But he really felt that nudge to start a prayer group for the teachers. And he and I had been discussing it and discussing it and discussing it and discussing it. And finally, God put that, that burning bush right in his path. When this little girl stopped by, said, while Jim was working on his computer, said, Mr. Carlson, this is for you. And it was just a card. And Jim didn't think anything about it. He said, thank you, and put it in his pocket. Well, then he pulled that out a little bit later. And on the front 
front of this card was this picture of a woman that was praying. And on the back was the scripture from Psalm 55, 17 that says, Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress. And he hears my voice. Mm -hmm. On the back side also is all about the importance of prayer. Jim got the message. Now, was that a burning bush? What? I wish we always had those. But this, in this modern age of email, voicemail, and texting, how does God speak? Mm -hmm. I have found that God speaks in so many different ways. If we would just open our eyes and our ears and listen. God speaks to me through the Bible, devotionals, music, my friends, my husband, my kids gifted speakers and gifted writers. He can use so many different ways to speak to us, but we need to make sure that we have cleared out the obstacles, that we have stopped, we have looked, and that we have listened. Music speaks to me in a huge way. Last week, the band sang The Voice of Truth, which was a huge gift to me. The song is so full of meaning and a wonderful reminder that despite all the voices out there, there is a voice that we need to listen to and believe. That is what Psalms are all about. David wrote Psalms to help us to relate that even though there are difficult times, God is there. He's our redeemer and our deliverer. Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Mm. I read that psalm every single day when I was at the bottom of this deep and dark pit that I never, ever thought I would get out. To me, that was God saying, Missy, I see you, and I am lifting you up, and I will put a new song in your mouth. That was God's promise to me. And here I am. My feet are on solid rock, and I've got a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to God. It takes practice to be able to discern God's voice amongst all the voices that we hear. But God promises that if we are seeking him, we will find him. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I think there are three key ways to discern or figure out if that voice in your head, if that's God's. Mm -hmm. Compare what that voice is saying to scripture. Is that voice in your head saying something consistent with what's in the Bible? God's not going to tell you to go against scripture. If, for example, that inner voice says to bow down and worship an idol, no matter what the reason, that's not God. Because, you know, that, that's like in the top five of thou shalt nots in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> you need to seek godly counsel if you're questioning what that voice is. Now, the Holy Spirit also speaks to your heart. And last week we talked about the nudges that we get. You know that nudge to call a friend or send out a card? Mm. That's the Holy Spirit, and you need to trust that nudge. But we've got to be careful because sometimes we get that voice in our head that makes us doubt or distracts us. And Satan is the master <coughs> of distraction, and he is the master deceiver. Remember the first week we talked about Jesus in the wilderness being tempted by Satan? Satan was trying to get Jesus to doubt and question God. He was trying to get him to take the easy way out. Well, what about, what about the Garden of Eden? You know, Satan said to Eve, did God really say? And he said, oh, surely. That wouldn't happen. On our last trip to China, Jim and I had this same experience. We were presented with this wonderful opportunity to have our new baby girl blessed by a Buddhist monk in a blessing ceremony. 
And immediately the rationalization started playing in my head. Wouldn't that be great? Because that's part of her culture. That would be okay, wouldn't it? And isn't a blessing a blessing? Shoot, I'll take all the blessings that I can get. And, you know, wouldn't God really understand that even though there's all these massive idols there and we're on our knees in front of those idols, wouldn't God understand in this case, you know, that we're really not bowing down to them? We're just there to get this blessing. But then that voice of truth played in our head. And the interesting piece is my husband was having the same conversation and got the same answer from God which was, this is not something that we should be doing as a follower of Christ. Satan is the master deceiver, and he will do whatever he can to get in the way of our relationship with God. So what do we do with it when we hear? What do we do when we hear God? Because God has us on this amazing, amazing adventure that we can participate in if we choose to. Elijah had to come out of his cave. We have that same choice. We can stay in our cave, or we can join God in this big, amazing venture, adventure. We could ignore the burning bush in our life, or we can choose to hear and have a relationship with our Creator. We have been given this huge, huge opportunity. In the movie, Evan Almighty, Evan Baxter, <laughs> has just been elected to Congress. He and his wife agree that they need to pray to God to support them in this big adventure that they have started out on. Evan prays to change the world. His wife prays that their family will grow closer together. God eventually asks Evan to build an ark. <laughs> and he's being called the modern day Noah. And just like Noah in the Old Testament, all the people, because this is the modern day, and they're thinking, he has really lost the truth. <laughs> and his wife doesn't know what to do with that. I mean, what do you do with your husband being told to build an ark by God? What do you do with that? And she is at this diner, and God, in the shape of Morgan Freeman, comes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a waiter there. And he says, what's wrong? And she says, well, my husband's the, the modern day Noah, and I just don't know what to do. And Morgan Freeman says, well, I think, I think you have an opportunity. When you pray for patience, does God zap you and you've got patience? Or does he give you the opportunity to have patience? Mm. When you're praying to be courageous, do you just get zapped and you're courageous? Or you get the opportunity to be courageous. When you're praying that your family will be closer together, does God zap you and your family's closer together? Or do you get the opportunity to be closer? Now here at our church, if we pray for our church to grow, to be stronger and be courageous for his kingdom, is God just going to zap us? we're automatically more stronger and courageous? Or would he give us the opportunity to be strong and courageous? If we want to be a church that is out there living the great commission to make disciples, is he going to automatically let us do that? Or is he going to refine us first? Is he going to give us the opportunity <coughs> to be refined? If our mission here at this church is to take Jesus as he is to the people as they are from the heart of Huntersville, is he going to just automatically let us do that? Or is he going to give us the opportunity to learn exactly who Jesus is? Isn't that what this discernment process we have been in all about? It has given each of us the opportunity to refine and define what we believe what is okay, what is not okay. I know I've been refined. I know now more what I believe, why I believe it, and what is important. What is okay, what's not okay. But this process has been icky and messy and really no fun at all. That's what the past few months.
else have been. But I have found when God makes major changes in our lives, they are messy and they're icky and they are often tear filled. And that's what we have been going through here at this church. But God has given us the opportunity in this discernment process to be stronger. I don't know how all of this is going to turn out, but I do know that God will show us the next right step if we would just listen. Staying in a cave and hiding is not why Jesus came to this earth. He came to redeem and to change lives. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we are not to stay in our cave. We've been called to fulfill the great commission to go and make disciples. I want to invite each of you to step out of that cave and listen for that gentle whisper. Because we need every member of this church to step out and listen for God in this discernment process. Mm -hmm. Over the next 40 days, I want to challenge you to listen and deepen your relationship with God. Use the tools we have talked about over the last couple of weeks, like centering prayer, mm -hmm. the daily examine, or journaling. Be intentional in developing that relationship with God so you can hear him clearly for the next right step for you in our church. I'm going to steal a line from the Robin Mark song that the band just sang. I know not all his plans, but I know I'm in his hands. He is God in control, whatever is his way, all is 